Okay, so this is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and today is Monday, March the the nineteenth, and twenty eighteen, and I'm with Lunacy, my friend Lunacy, and we're going to talk about just whatever today because we <laughs> we started out. You said it was it has been a week, and I said me too. Only mine's oh, been. Really I sick. missed that. There was some lag on this end. With oh you said it had been a week and i said me too only mine's been very surreal i don't have a lot of folks in my field so i'm not around a lot of people you know extraneous to myself and so when When stuff like this starts going down, it, it's just really I'm dealing with me because I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of folks. You know what I mean? I, I was so ill for so long. I don't, I don't have a circle of friends, so to speak, because I was housebound and practically bedridden for the last 15 years until about three years ago. So I don't have a wide circle. It's a very small circle. And actually it's really not even a circle. I, I have, you know, like two or three people in my life. That's about it. That that's really, that's it. And so I don't have a lot of the interactions with really much of anyone. You know, yeah, if I go out and go, you know, grocery shop or whatever, but those aren't really, you know, interactions to have conversations. You know what I mean? Well, and it seems like our society is structured so that you don't ever have to engage in a real conversation, you know, to, to engage basically in our economy to get, to get your needs met. Um, you, you've got to go looking for that, you know, on your own. And there's so many people that, uh, that, that apparently don't wish to uh, engage on this level or, or even, and I, I've fallen into this one myself. Uh, uh, there's some people that, that want to engage, uh, but then really get a, a true taste of, of oh my gosh uh, th they get some big nuggets of truth in and then all of a sudden they realize they've got work to do at home and and wow just <laughs> nobody likes the feeling of work piling up on their plate so just the the way society is structured to be able to in a zombie unconscious fashion just waste your whole life without ever having these kind of explorations. Uh, yeah, I, I see that facet too. Well, even like you, like you were saying there, even when you find someone you think might be interested in having that kind of a conversation, I've, I've, I've had conversations where it's like a lot of assumptions get made too then. You know what I mean? A lot of assumptions start getting made. And instead of asking questions to see, you know, really try to figure out, well, what is this person saying? What, what, what do you mean when you say X, Y, or Z? You know, and I think that happens with all of us, myself included. We just make assumptions that that's what they meant. Now, I, I, I don't do that so much anymore, specifically since anytime I try to have conversations, the English language is so lacking in, in try to, trying to express what it is I wish to express. And it's not even that it's lacking. It's you and I have just had this conversation before where right in, in, in same families and familial situations where you would think that the language should be pretty much the same. It, it's not oftentimes, it's just not. 
when I say something, I can only mean what I think it means to me. The definition doesn't mean Jack necessarily if it means a specific something to me. And, and that's, I don't know, I guess I feel like I, I, I'm getting that now. I, I totally uh, am comprehending that my definition for things is sometimes completely different than someone else's definition of say love. You and I have kind of had that conversation before or division or compassion or whatever the word really is. The definition in the dictionary really, okay, so that's one thing, but it's the person's experience of how that definition how, how that has happened for them in their life, which actually informs them of the definition of that word. And that's, and, and that's the, the normal, that's the normal trajectory <clears throat> or, or flow. You usually have some experience first and it's such an experience that I, I got to find a way to talk about this, to, to share, to converse and new words get formed up because of that experience and conversations true meeting of the minds only really happen when there's two different beings and they've each had that same shared experience so that shared experience is now common and then the language arises from that and the backwards part about our entire society is that uh, we get we all get taken out and put into an indoctrination system where they take a, the exact opposite flow. They give us a bunch of words. They tell us what the definitions are. There's an expectation and an assumption that we're all in this collective agreement about the meanings of all these different words and terms. And then they tell us about the experiences uh, in terms of these words, and a lot of times that's done in books, a lot of times it's done in movies and TV shows, and, and when, it's, when that experience is given to us through our eyes and our ears by watching a television, it, it really fools the psyche. You know, it's hard to distinguish, really, what's reality in these interpersonal dynamics and what's not. No, exactly right. So for, for, for me, I, I don't, and the reason I went off on that is that for me, because I don't have a lot of, uh, a lot of folks in my field, pretty much, you know, I have Lisa and her husband and I have, you know, a local friend here that I see on occasion, like, you know, once every three or four weeks. And that's pretty much it. I see my sister every now and again. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it right now. So I don't have a lot of interaction with folks physically in my field where to get, uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, actually at this juncture with the, some of the energy and, and what I'm doing, you know, going really deep within myself. I think that's probably a good thing for me anyway. Um, I've had that bull in a china shop energy all my life where I go in and, you know, this is what I think and feel and, you know, and, and a lot of folks don't take to that. And I get that. I get that. That's okay. I, I'm, I'm, I think, I think I'm in, I'm in, I'm in the perfect spot right now for myself, for whatever the reason. And so when I was saying to you earlier, for me, it's been a very surreal week since you and I spoke last. I've been a lot of feeling like I'm out of time or in no time or just not even quite comprehending where the time went, so to speak. You know, it's like, there's a lot of, you know, reflection, of course, on myself, but then I'm also having a lot of different kinds of experiences 
on my bio mat. And, um, I, I, I usually say that because that's where I try to do my, you know, my meditation thing, whatever that's, you know. So there's some lag. I'm missing some, some words and, and the location. What, what's the location? Well, I was talking about my biomat. It's, okay. It's this, uh, it's an amethyst. Um, it's an infrared mat with amethyst and black tourmaline. And it just heats up through the amethyst and the black tourmaline. And it's just a very relaxing place. And. Wow. We're getting, we're getting a lot of lag, Sheila. I'm not quite sure what's going on. Hmm. Wow. It says, I don't, it's saying mine was unstable, but. It said that earlier on mine too. Uh, Well, go figure. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm going to pause my recording for a second, okay? Okay. So I went and checked it again, and I'll share the screen with you. A lot of folks are saying, I've seen different things saying that, oh, well, you know, there's been a big hype about we're supposed to have a big solar storm, and there's nothing there. Well, here's my screen that shows, well, look at there, we do have a geomagnetic storm on the Earth at the moment, and this is from NOAA. So I'm not quite sure <laughs> what everybody has been saying about there was not supposed to be. I knew uh, last night, actually, I, I'd i started um, keeping a pain diary years ago because of all the meds I was on and everything because I, I was watching suspicious observers and I happened to notice that on the days that we were having solar storms I had more pain in my body mm -hmm. and so I started keeping a pain journal tracking it with the sun activity and I noticed that my pain level would increase exponentially whenever we had any kind of Solar flare activity, the, anytime the Earth was under a geomagnetic storm or a solar storm or we were having a coronal hole stream uh, flow into the Earth, I, I always had increased pain. Now, for a while, I noticed that I was integrating it faster and faster, this pain. It just didn't last as long. And there have been several um, storms in the last year and a half almost two full years that have come and gone and i didn't even know we were having them but i knew at about midnight last night because it woke me up out of a dead sleep that we were under a storm because the pounding in my head and the pounding in my chest was so intense i just knew we were and then i woke up this morning and, yep sure enough we were Hmm. So I know that that can mess with the internet. That's what I was saying. Okay. That's what I'm sure. Since we are both experiencing this, mm -hmm. telling us that our internet is unstable, I'm thinking that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Again, I could be wrong, but. So tell me, you were saying that you've, you've had a, a week, you said. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, let's see. The last I talked with you, uh, we oh, we talked about monkeys and ladders and bananas and uh, and Matt Kahn and which I've seen uh, that by the way. Thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you saw that because that's that's pretty much what. Uh, what precipitated the in the what all the rest of the days that lead up to another another session of talking with you um you know i i decided wow i i hadn't heard from anything from matt Kahn in a while i'd go just physically go check his channel and i saw that oh i was unsubscribed i i <laughs> Yeah, I'm magnanimous I, of YouTube to do that for you. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I do remember <clears throat> seeing a message from him. <clears throat> wow, I don't know. Within the past year, I think, 
<clears throat> him and his his partner Julie were going to be uh, uh, separating and doing their thing, and so I knew that he was going through some, you know, some some parts of his journey with that. And I knew that there was going to be changes, and I didn't expect to to hear much from him. So uh, he has posted a few videos, and there was a video that he posted just well, I think two weeks ago, and it was I, this is the one that we're talking about. Um, if I remember the name correctly, or at least it's kind of like this, it was healing from your family dynamics. Mm -hmm. And I, you can just tell by listening, it's a, it's a little bit over an hour long and he's been in the middle of his journey. And we're, we're talking earlier about those different internal <clears throat> variables that we hold and one of them's love and what are we going to stuff in that variable what's the definition what does love mean to us and then we're going to unleash ourselves out into this world with this definition of love and all the behavior that that has been defined as loving is what we're going to uh, basically unleash onto the world and <clears throat> we go through and we change these different definitions throughout the spiritual journey and oh wow holy cow just this one tiny change of this one little facet of this one variable that i was holding inside uh is is making a market impact on every facet of my life it's such a core foundational concept that just to even examine it and consider changing it what it means I'm under the hood of my consciousness I've got the engine all ripped out I've got a jack under the transmission I'm not I'm not going anywhere I'm not I'm not safe to go anywhere would you get in your car in that state of repair well you know sometimes you just can't get into your consciousness and go out and do normal mainstream things when you're in the middle of of redefining yourself and I found myself spending, what, days just in bed. Finally got myself up after two days in bed just to go to the grocery store because I was out of food. So, uh, but this is the most creative work that any being is ever, ever going to do. And for the most part, we're the only ones that are going to see this work and know every little brushstroke that we had to make. And Matt Kahn's description of, of this recent part of his journey just really gave me a lot of descriptions and understanding that I could overlay over my journey <clears throat> that I've had uh, uh, with parents that I've had and in redefining, continually redefining these core terms. Uh, well, how many times have I had to redefine, you know, what, what love is till I, till I get one that I haven't redefined in a while. And, and in this case, it was, the the variable or the term abuse and that's really what I've redefined a number of times throughout my life and and in all of this and in, in redefining what the term abuse is for your own self automatically wow your grace is going to put you in experiences where you have to determine what your own self value is wow, now that I've redefined abuse and I'm in a situation that I used to be in before, I used to expect myself to be in and flip with, but huh, wow, this, this is not respectful of me. This is not considerate at all. This is, this is using me in, a, in an aberrant way. This is abuse. And what am I going to do with it? How am I going to communicate this to the universe, you know, I can withdraw from, from the unhealthy dynamic that I see now, but I can't, I can't expect these other people to, 
pick up the reins of their spiritual journey and unwind that dynamic in themselves no. on the spot. So each tiny little change that we make inside and have to rip out the engine guts and everything just to get in there and, and tweak these changes and try it out. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy and there's a huge, there's a huge component that requires a lot of sleep, at least for me when, when I'm in the midst of that. And, and that's what, you know, to just draw a circle around it. That's what my, my week's been about. <laughs> well, I was going to say, yes, I think that might be why I'm feeling the no time because it, um, when sleep isn't a component, staring out the window is just because I feel what you're saying there. Um, and for me, doing having these conversations with you, with BZ, Lisa, others, and putting them out there for public consumption. Uh, there's a lot of, again, a lot of assumptions get made. And then, you know, I'm new to all of that, of course, you know. Um, and I, I just don't, there's a part of me that wants to say, oh, no, you've got it all wrong. Um, you're, you're, you've made some assumptions about some things. And then there's another part of me that says, well, why, why do you feel the need to explain your journey to anyone? Uh, not, not charge an admittance here. Not, uh, so I'm not quite, you know, there's, it's like a, Hmm. There was a conversation that took place today in regards to all of that about. about uh, so there was a bunch of, bunch of lag there. Hold oh. on just a sec. Okay. Try it again. Well, I mean, there's, there's a, like I said, there seems to be assumptions that are made sometimes I think about different things. And I can't do anything about what other people think I mean or, or anything. I mean, I'm just trying to, I, I have never once said that I'm here to help anyone but me. Now that might sound like uh, very egocentric and whatever. And I, I, I can't help anyone that thinks that. Um, I've never said I was out here trying to, fix the world, fix anybody, give anybody any ideas about anything. No, I'm trying to get into me and figure me out. And I feel very fortunate that I have folks like you and Lisa and BZ who are willing to talk to me about things like this because, you know, well, I mean, I realize I'm willing to look at myself on in all aspects because that's what it takes. First of all, if you're, if I'm actually going to do this, then I have to really be willing to look at every facet of it. Can't leave anything out just because it's uncomfortable. It's not pretty to look at. Oh, I know. I feel it all in my chakra line when you're talking about it. It's like the, ooh. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it feels really oogie googie and nobody really <laughs> wants to see it or whatever. But, you know, that's, that's what I'm doing here. That's what this is all about for me. And, uh, it's basically your video journal of your of your healing and ascension of your consciousness, and uh, it's amazing how many times the pattern has, you know, presented itself in front of everybody in our economy and our society. That you got to look outside yourself for something to come in and fix you, and so you're really in the, in the sense of monkey see monkey do you're doing the best thing, the healthiest thing that you can for society. And that's to 
display the behavior that you want to see everybody else doing. And that's, hey, look within. I was deceived. I had it all wrong. I don't know what the right answer is, but I'm unwinding the wrong right now. And, and I'm finding a stable platform and it's taken a lot of work and yeah. it's a really hard, intense journey. But this is the only way that we're going to get to a, a place of sanity in a collective sense. And uh, that's where the saying, be the change that you want to see yeah. comes from. Full, full on agree with you on that. Um, you know, uh, looking at all of my crap is not an easy thing. And I, I think anybody that is actually doing this kind of work would agree. I know you would, because I know you're doing it too. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, I know uh, I don't know. It feels like uh, it feels like for me anyway. It feels sort of like there are things that are ramping up to a degree where uh, well, I because I, I okay. You said something about. Um, looking outside of ourselves for that answer. Every single time I've ever done that, I've ended up worse off, worse off than I ever started out. You know, looking outside myself, I mean, you know, health wise, um, psyche wise, all, all of these things have not worked for me. So for me, this is it. This is, the, this is, this is, and, and, I mean, I'm nowhere near, even partway finished. <laughs> I don't think we ever actually get finished. As long as we're here and expanding, we're going to be finding all kinds of stuff. You know, the monkeys and the bananas and the ladders, they don't just disappear, you know, because you always got a few monkeys around trying to beat you down still. <laughs> you know. So, I don't know. That, that's that been my thing. That and, like I said, some very surreal. When I say surreal, because I've been having some... Mm, in some cases, it, it actually has tinged i won't say psychedelic because i've never had i mean i i did acid as a you know as a youngster not a kid but you know a uh, young adult um so it was similar a little similar to that but but not really i don't know how to explain that i know that sounded wrong but uh, that's all i got no um, i get it uh, a lot of my i would call them visionary states that that I can find my man uh, have a a lot of similarities with a psychedelic trip that it's different but but yet there's a component there that you know it, it's basically okay there there's some magical whatever coming into my consciousness thoughts uh images that I know aren't coming in through my eyes, but they're just on a canvas in my head or, or these wonderful sounds that, that I know they're not coming in through my ears, but I can hear them in my head. And what's the source of this? And, and how is it so magical? Right. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm feeling when, when I hear you talk about it. Yeah, that's exactly correct. I can't sustain it for a very long period of time. Um, it's, it's as though whatever is taking place, it is, I'm, I am beginning to feel like it's a, it's a, a sort of like a multidimensional type thing. I mean, it's very clearly happening, 
as I am awake, I am not asleep, I am not in an altered, a chemically altered state. Um, and yet, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm very clear on where I am. I'm, I'm in my room or whatever, I'm on the biomat, you know, and this is happening and yet it seems as though it's happening somewhere else. And that's why I say by very surreal. Mm -hmm. A very surreal set of circumstances of, of, of what's been taking place for me. Mm -hmm. Now it slowed down. I didn't have it, it at all yesterday only once the day before. So, I mean, I don't know what any of that means or why it's happening for me at this time where it never has before. I mean, not, not like this. I've had, I've, I've seen the colors swirling around, but not, not like what I've experienced over this past week. Maybe it's because I'm paying closer attention to it. I don't know. I, I don't know what it is. Well, so how would you describe, so you, you said, you said you've seen the squirreling colors, mm -hmm. but that's not what it was this week. Can you, how, what, sure. um, what was it that's different from squirreling colors? Well, for one thing in, in this week I had, uh, twice I had uh, a feeling of an energetic coming towards me it wasn't uh, anything that I was fearful of but it was very clearly an energetic it had it was precipitated by uh, some color that felt as though it was emanating from out of me and what I mean by that is like, you know, as I'm laying there behind my eyes, the swirling color is going on. But when I say the swirling color, it, when I take my attention, my focus and my attention on what is transpiring behind my eyes, this color feels as though it's emanating out of me uh, in some fashion. I'm not even sure exactly from where it's just from behind my eyes, when I have my eyes closed, it is as though I'm seeing these different colors rising out of me and just moving off away. There's definitely, that's the first thing that happens. It's as though something is being precipitated by me. So I'll be very clear in that. It feels as though I am initiating something. What it is got no clue but it's coming from me and then and then there's just some very sometimes it's um it can be different colors um starts out generally like a magenta and gold and orange mix of colors shot through with some electric blue and they're just kind of mulling around and then it's as though I can feel as though more of me is the only way I know how to explain that or me in general is sinking further in to my physical body. And it is those colors, at least in one case, I had this distinct feeling that I, I could take my consciousness and I moved it. I was moving it. I've shared this in another video. I, I moved it from the point of right here where my eyes, you know, could see what was going on. And I felt as though I was moving my consciousness back down into, for lack of a better term, my third eye, my pineal gland, wherever that is. But it felt like a downward and then upward movement. So I don't know how to explain that, but that's what it felt like. And the moment I, I felt I had this downward movement, it was though my attention, I was as though I was looking out from behind my eye, the lenses of my eye. Like um, if you look at, you know, a picture of an eye, 
and you see the pupil and, and there's a lens that we have. It was as though my consciousness stepped, as though, as though I were fully 3D standing behind my eyeball, looking out. Okay, so that was a little odd, not going to lie. Never had that happen before. And as I moved down in, I could, it was as though I was, I don't know, just coming more into this physical vessel of some sort. I don't know. That's why I say it's, it's very hard to describe, but it was, I did, I did get playful with it where I was trying to take my, my, my focus and move it around in in there behind my eyes and in my and so when I got to where I thought you know in my squirrely little head my pineal might be it was as though I had this like almost like an iris type thing would open you know if you see but yet it was sort of swirly and more color, like I said, but it was very similar to an eye that was opened. The iris of a, let's say a, a lens or an aperture or whatever, you know, how it would open. Um, and I could start to make out images, but it was all still very color and you know, very, like I said, very surreal. I don't know how to that's the only word I can come up with that that um, feels like it comes anywhere near to adequately describing the experiences I've had in this past week. Like I said, not not very many of them, and not not for a protracted amount of time, but significant for me in that I've not had that before. Not without taking acid when I was 20 something years old, you know, so that's been a long time ago. Yeah, well, I think all of the words that, that I heard you use to describe, you know, what's going on for you are words that I could have seen myself choosing uh, to describe different surreal experiences that I've had along my journey. Uh, you know, I, I just use the term visionary experiences. Uh, my, you know, I, I'll be interested to see how yours progress because mine, mine became really clear. Uh, it's, it's like some power all of a sudden took the swirling colors uh, and just uh, put them into crystal clear HD focus. Uh, you know, and 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 it's that. That little moment, it's fleeting, but when there's that HD focus, there's also another component. Let, just like you say, you know, I know I'm at home, I know I'm in my room, but there's this emotional component that comes through, and you just know exactly the types of energy and emotions that are going on in this scene, and, and in an emotional sense, you might as well be there in that scene, and that's... That's where my experiences, like you're describing, have, have it up going. So you started out seeing swirling colors too? Yeah, the first time I really became aware that, that there was something... Hmm. that there was something there with with the kind of colors that you can see uh you know when your eyes are open or closed um you know sometimes you see them just sitting in the dark uh this was probably about 2007 2008 and i had picked up a, a guitar and was just strumming a guitar and it was dark and I was living rurally and uh, I started in the evening and I just was strumming chords into the dark. And when it became, I just noticed that, wow, these colors that I know they're not 
Wow, you're totally frozen on the screen. I think we got some lag. Yeah, you're freezing back and forth a little too. Hmm, okay. How am I now? Yeah, you're okay now. Okay. So I, I just noticed that every time I changed chords, the colors would change. And it really made me scratch my head. What's going on here? And for two weeks in a row, every night, I'd sit there and strum the chords, and I'd strum a D chord, and I'd just see greens and blues. And I'd strum a G chord, and I'd see reds and purples. And I'd strum an A chord, and I'd just see gold static. And that's how it started for me uh, with, with my whole visionary state. Uh, it was yeah, That's interesting because that's, more, that's closer to synesthesia, it sounds like. I think we we talked about that once before too. That's interesting. There's been no. Yeah, I think you're saying something about synesthesia, but we've definitely got some lag getting in the way of this. Yeah, I know. I see that. It just told me mine's unstable. We might. I don't know how this will turn out because of the the solar storm. Hopefully, it won't <laughs> be too bad. <laughs> yes, I did. I did say that it sounded very much. I think we even talked about that once before. It sounds very much like synesthesia. Yeah. Do you still experience that? Uh, I don't have a guitar right now, so I'd have to. Uh, that was the only instrument, you know, that that it really happened with. Uh, um. What I've noticed is that there seems to be, uh, in, in, in almost, I feel like it's in a similar fashion to the way you were describing, you can move your consciousness around the different points. There's just through some kind of thought or focus or something like that, there, there, there is a way to start to, I don't know if I would say control what's going on, but have, have some sort of an impact on it. Make the colors, oh, I can make the colors swirl clockwise and now I can make them swirl counterclockwise. Like, like that would be a fun experiment for you to try. Um, and then I noticed that there were different, total different facets of my experience that I could do the same types of things with. And uh, one of these examples was I was laying down on my bed uh, trying to meditate, but the experience that Grace brought me was this, it just in one of my butt cheeks felt like this vibration. And I don't know why I had even the idea to do this, but just with my thoughts, I was like, oh, we're going to move that down to my foot. And next thing I felt my right foot vibrating. And I just I had the best time for hours. Just I would cycle this vibration all the way down my back, up the bottoms of my feet, across the top of me. Every time I did it around my head, every hair on my head would stand up. Every hair on my neck would stand up. There was something to this that was going on. I don't know what it was, but I was moving something, something around with my thoughts. And, and so there's some part of our experience. I don't know what all of it is or how to describe it or what the mechanism behind it is, but we can use our thoughts to change stuff. Well, yeah, see, that's what, now I did, I did experiment with that a little bit, actually. Um, did it right on camera the other night. Um, actually, um, I, my mouth was my whole, it was as if I was having a, you know how when you start getting an allergic reaction, which I've never had, but I've heard it described as being kind of buzzy around the mouth, sort of a vibratory buzz kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to move that to my hands. And BZ was talking and I, you know, I decided I would do it, right? So I'm sitting here and I, well, it worked, but it went through my nose first. <laughs> <laughs> Did That's you start like, sneezing? No, I no, but I could it it went there, but it's like I didn't totally control it. It went where I wanted it to go, but I didn't tell it how what route to, <laughs> to take apparently. 
and it went through my nose. It was just very funny because I went from buzzing here to buzzing here to buzzing here. So it was just, you know, like I said, it was a little bit, a little bit different. You know. Well, that's cool. I, uh, uh, which video was that? I'll have to go. Um, it's watch the, that. the latest one, and now for something completely different, <laughs> because it's basically. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, we are basically talking about what's been going on, you know, energetically and that kind of thing. So. Yeah. Uh, any. Uh, any new information you've come across with uh, Hat Jay's situation? Uh, no, but I did come across something very interesting that was issued by the Federal Reserve. Oh. Yeah. What was that? A cease and desist order to China. Now, isn't that interesting? I'll have to, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. I'm, I, I, um, uh, I haven't had the, the opportunity to really look into it. I saw it on Facebook and I went and I made sure that it is definitely from the federal reserve. And it is, it was a PDF that was issued and it's some sort of a cease and desist. And I'm not quite sure what it's all about, but I suspect it's, I suspect it means something as they, they don't generally do stuff like that to each other. Well, it's it's interesting because cease and desist order is something that Heather's basically issued to them. That's why I said I there's there I really I really feel like there is so much going on under the surface with all of this that none of us actually get to see. And I know that there's a lot of folks that watch you and me because of my coverage of the trial and your coverage of the press bay and everything that you've been looking into that think that nothing's going on or, you know, uh, everything has happened and now people are just going to jail and oh well, but I've seen too much recently to think that that is anywhere near the case. I mean, there's been a whole slew of of executive orders that have been issued again. And now that what was two pages when it was origin, originally issued, when the executive order uh, that was signed on December 21st, 2017 was issued, the one, you know, human trafficking and slavery, um, there was a two page two pages that were issued as the annex to that for the office of foreign asset control i think is what it was you know the names the list of names of people whose assets were frozen well that annex is up to over 1100 pages now and i'm quite sure that there's some really interesting names on that but i haven't had the opportunity or that really the the stamina, to be honest with you, to sit. And I started going through there. There's an awful lot of still a lot of foreign names on there. But there's, I just, I didn't even get through the A's. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of names and doing business as and, uh, you know, all, I mean, the 1,100 pages now. This is not fake news either. This is issued directly from, you know, the dot gov sites and that sort of thing. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff that's happening out there, but it's happening quietly and it's happening below the radar on purpose. I think because again, how do you tell everybody on planet earth? They've been lied to for, you know, eons I'm going with now. <laughs> so, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to be quietly handled. And I know we're all very anxious to see some of this get started going on, but I'm, you know, with some of the information that came out last week about Kobe steel and all of that, that, that that's been talked about. And there's, there's a lot going on that I'm, that none of us, have even a clue as to exactly what it means. 
you know, I mean. Well, what, what was the, so I've, I've literally, I, I don't know anything that's going on in the past week. You, you mentioned gotcha. something about Kobe Steel. Well, that's, it's a, yes, it's a Japanese steel company that has admitted, openly admitted, and the CEO has stepped down, that they basically sold substandard steel products for the last 50 years. 50 well, so how many structures uh, are, are built with their steel? Yeah, kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? How many cars have been built with that steel? How many bridges? How many buildings? All kinds of information like that, okay? There, that's what I'm saying. There's, there's lots of big, big things that are happening very, very quietly. I think that's, again, that's just me. And I don't even, that's all I've seen is just those few little things right there. And I feel like, oh, that's, that's huge stuff right there. <laughs> that's huge stuff right there. Yeah, it's hard to know uh, what the big picture looks like, but I definitely see a lot of puzzle pieces in flux. Yeah, me too. And moving all the time. You know, just uh, a lot of maneuvering things around, I think. That's what I see. Oh, wow. We've got some lag again. Up here. Okay. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Yeah, we missed all that. Oh, well, crap. I was just saying that there's a lot of stuff moving around that we can't even really tell what what's what. I think. I know um, I just heard something this morning. I don't know how true it is that one of those uh, Saudi princes apparently committed suicide just recently. I don't know, over the weekend or something. Oh, yeah. That's the first time hearing of that. I don't, I don't really know much about it, and I don't know if it's true or not. I don't, it's, it's one of the ones that uh, has had his hands in a lot of different things, apparently. So I don't know. I don't even, like I said, I don't know how true that is because I, I've been out doing stuff today, you know, grocery shopping and whatnot. And so I'm not real, I haven't really had a chance to look into much, but I did happen to see that in passing. And I don't know, no, the, the list of, of CEOs that have stepped down and uh, selling off stuff and all kinds of stuff just keeps growing. And so there's all kinds of little tiny things that are being handled very quietly. So I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, but I got a feeling, I got a feeling we're going to see some big stuff in the next couple of weeks here. I don't know why, but I've been feeling like, end of March, the beginning of April, some stuff's going to start moving. I got nothing I can point to on that. Just me. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there was a really interesting other headline that, that I saw just within the past couple of days. And it was really interesting for me because uh, just because of the way I even learned that, uh, that this was a rabbit hole or, or, or possibly part of the deception to begin with. And it, it was when I was looking into a bunch of the flat earth stuff, but on the, the globe busters channel, um, uh, either that or Jaronism, who's part of the globe busters channel, uh, was talking about Stephen Hawking and had done a bunch of research into ALS and uh, what the expected lifespan is of someone with ALS, you know, from the time that, hey, we know you got ALS and, and you know, now this is the longest person uh, that we know of. And, and Stephen Hawking is just astronomically outside of any kind of, we'll just call them actuarial tables or, or statistics for ALS. Uh, and 
and Jaronism was really starting to talk pretty pretty vocally about him and uh, went to the ALS's main webpage site and uh, looked at all of the, I guess there's a, a list of all the people that have had ALS and Stephen Hawking's name was not on there and he made a big video. You know, how is it that this pinnacle, you know, this the, the brightest mind or whatever who's been imprisoned inside a body ravaged with ALS and has totally blown the lid off of ALS and, and what a human being can do, uh, where, where is the light on that? What's, what's different about his journey that's, that's you know, uh, not present in all these other people's uh, AL, with ALS's journey? And so then the ALS changed their website, and now Stephen Hawking's name is on there. Um, but there was... Also, a lot of uh, videos that you can go out there and, and look at about just the Stephen Hawking's image or his pictures throughout time. And then when you look at just really what his message is, you know, it's, it's just basically, I'm the greatest scientist ever there is. This is my reality. This is truth. And then you got but Neil deGrasse Tyson and all the rest of them, oh, this is, yeah, this is great. And, and Jaronism's like, how do we know that that's not a paper mache doll on a remote control wheelchair with a little speaker that taken out of a speaking spell? And, and it's just interesting that, wow, within a relatively short period of time from Jaron really – questioning asking these questions now all of a sudden oh uh stephen hawking died but but apparently right on the heels of of there's some book or something that he published and 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 it's talking about uh oh all these different dimensions and alien life exists but but now he's dead he's not going to be here to ask questions for but he's the greatest mind ever there lived and this is what is this going to be his magnum opus or whatever is this is this what we're all going to well Sorry. there's if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong about this but if i'm not mistaken i think there there's actually a mandela effect involved with uh hawking as well because i could, oh. i swear to god i thought he died a long time ago I, I could be completely wrong about that, but for some reason, I feel like it was like the early 80s or something, you know, way back when everybody thought Mandela originally died too. <laughs> uh, but I don't, I don't, again, I don't know about that either, but I, I feel what you're saying. You're right. Because there's a whole lot of uh, that same kind of thing about Einstein, you know, mm -hmm. uh, greatest, you know, and quite frankly, there's some of his stuff that, you know, they, they know now is like, no, no, that's not right. So, I mean, I don't know. You, that's, that's a good question. I did hear supposedly that because when I heard that he died, I was like, wait a minute, didn't he already die once before? I mean, I know they had him on Big Bang Theory and all that, you know, for a while. But I, I thought for some reason it was some time ago. But now I didn't know this about that. But you're right. That that's 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 a good damn question. Why? What? With the ALS, I didn't even stop to think about that. I yeah, I don't I don't know what the exact figures are. But when I heard Jaron talking about him, they were ridiculous. Like uh, the average person uh, diagnosed with ALS might live what uh, two years something something small like that and and here where Stephen Hawking is decades uh, yeah how do you explain that yeah no how do you yeah that doesn't make any sense does it well there's a lot of stuff like that that doesn't make any sense though isn't there but see now here's the thing Here's where some of the languaging would get us into trouble. Oh, how dare you question this man who was so ill in a wheelchair? You, you know, how dare you question any of that? And how dare you question that he's the greatest mind that ever lived? I mean, can't you see he's in a wheelchair and he's making it 
through all this and he's you know so yeah see there's a lot a lot of that mm -hmm. no i get you yeah yeah for mm -hmm. sure and and there's a there's a lot of people that that really well it's kind of like telling them that santa claus isn't real like no you don't want when you're a little kid you don't want to believe that santa claus isn't real that it was that it was all i just made up to to put you in a certain state of mind and it's the same thing with stephen hawking like if the if the powers that be are going to lie to us this way well where where is the where do they draw the line or do they even draw one? Well, I was going to say, now you and I both know that they don't, but okay. <laughs> yeah. And then the question becomes, okay, well, where am I going to draw the line and what choices am I going to make relative to all of this new information? And, and that's the part that we talked about earlier. That's the spiritual journey. That's, that's work. And when you're, when you're, thinking that you're in the midst of reality and, and things are going great and you got everything to be disillusioned and realize that, oh, first of all, I don't have what I thought I had, but second of all, I've got to do a lot of inner work. It's, you, you, go, from, you go from bliss to where, where you really didn't want to be. Right. Where's the door? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what? What what's the point? Why am I doing all of this? Yeah. I'm sorry. I signed up for what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I have I have asked that I have asked myself a couple of the questions like that before. Really? I agreed to what now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. So and where do we go from here? There is. Yeah, a I don't know. I know I canceled. Uh, I canceled my plans for tonight, and I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna hang out and continue continue what I've been doing this week. Because when I ask Grace for my emotional preview, I can't. I can't find peace by doing anything but just. You know what? We're just staying at home. We're snuggling with the kitty cat tonight. <laughs> I can't say I blame you. Actually, that's why I went grocery shopping today because I'm planning on doing much of the same thing all week. This is it yep. I'm right here. I don't have anywhere else I got to go now. I'm done. <laughs> at least, at least for a week or more. <laughs> yeah, your picture totally froze, and I got some of your audio. But your picture still froze. Oh, there you're back. <laughs> it was just on this funny, like weird expression, and you just kept hearing your voice go. Well, it won't be the first time I look funny on video. I'm <laughs> yeah, sure it exactly. Won't be the last either. We're, As yeah, we're yeah, we're all we're all right there. All those folks with the little special effects they like to do of me out there get a hold of it. So there's that. But people are doing special effects on you on you. In one of our other videos you and I had. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, uh, somebody <laughs> told me once, you you know you've made it when you get at least one hater. <laughs> oh, well, isn't that beautiful? You have made it then. Ah, well. Again, I'm not doing this for anybody but myself. I just I like I like what I'm doing. I like that I'm getting to learn and have conversations with people. As I said, I am pretty isolated here. I have Lisa and her husband and I have, you know, occasionally my sister and occasionally another friend that really isn't into any of this hard work that we're doing. And, um, and I have BZ and you, and that's, that's really it. And I'm okay with that. I mean, well, I really you know, that's, I don't I don't know anybody who has any more than that at this point at this stage of the game. I don't think I could cope. I'm going to be honest with you. I do not think I could cope if I was having to go out there and uh mix it up and mingle with folks and all that cuz I I have no desire. I really have no desire for chit-chatty small talk that means nothing. Yeah. 
not my cup of tea anymore. Um, yeah, no. So I'm, 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 I'm just as happy to, to, to do this and, and, and be by myself or whatever. Um, you know, I, I, I'm cool with that. Well, you know, once you've experienced solitude, or I'll, uh, I'll turn this around. Once I experienced solitude, then I knew that this is what the minimum that I I can expect for myself. Like this is this is as bad as it's going to get. Like we talk about defining, you know, self value and and abuse and you know a lot of a lot of the abuse that goes on is really because we put ourselves into abusive situations and that enables the abuse to even happen so uh darn it i forgot what what i was going to plug that back into well i'm in I, you you were speaking in regards to self value and and solitude and i will say oh yes thank you yes so go um so as you as you change what abuse is to you well then the different things that you're going to do when you're in solitude by yourself you know are uh are you going to mentally berate yourself and tell you that god you're so stupid you really should be doing all of this other stuff you know you're, you're in solitude by yourself but you know what wow Wow, that talk doesn't get anybody anywhere. That's abusive. That has no part in my journey anymore. And then in your solitude moments, hey, that's gone. You, you've, got, you've got a little bit more peace. <clears throat> so each time you make an incremental change in one of those internal variables, like not even like what's abuse, what's love. Oh, well, well when I'm by myself, am I going to act loving towards myself? So you get far enough along in the spiritual journey and you embrace solitude because that's really the first step after you get out of tinkering around under the hood. It's You got to see how it flows in solitude. See, you know, does this, does my cat flow well with who I am now? You know, we're going to try that first before we lay it on anyone else. Yeah. And, uh, well, see, I haven't we, even gotten that far. I, 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 I have, I haven't gotten to, you were, we, you actually, we were talking about valuing of self. Mm. So I'm, I'm just getting to that stage where I'm not berating myself for different things, you know, mm. and, and learning how to value Oh, and really, what is that for me? What what does that look like? What what does uh, not just valuing myself, but um, well, loving myself too? What does that look like? What does it feel like? I have no clue, really. I mean, not really. Mm -hmm. I, I I spent all of my life actually. Uh, not judging myself. Well, yeah, judging myself also, but, um, and comparing is not the word I'm looking for, but evaluating or evaluating either way you want to say myself based on others, thoughts, feelings, and reactions to me, never myself, mm -hmm. never me, never me. Cause I wasn't worth all that. I, no, because that's egoic, by the way. If you think of yourself, that's egoic, right? That's kind of the thoughts, anyway, that I've had to work through some, too. But there's... So just trying to figure out... Yeah, okay, well, what do I mean to me? To me? Uh, you know, what do I mean to me? Uh, and what do I like about me? And what, what am I worth to me? 
and, you know, all of those kinds of things. Because up until hmm, just a couple of months ago, it was more about what I could do or should do for others, not what I could do or, or might want to do for me. Because that was a very egoic and selfish thing to think of me, you know, uh, in any certain way, you know. So there's a there there's a whole hell of a lot of I I love that's why when you talked about when you texted me about this bookmark of talking about valuing of self that's a huge one for me because I'm not even clear if I if I if I if I'm even in the realm of doing that for myself the way I'd like to because I don't really even know who I am still by the way. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in order, in order to communicate to the universe at large what value you place on yourself, you've got to know yourself. And so uh, in order to know yourself, you really got to tinker around under the hood. You've got to, you got to take your, your looking glass that's full of all your direct observations from your entire life and carve some safe space for yourself. Say, we're going to take a look at every facet. And uh, I, this little tidbit uh, from Matt Kahn went a long way towards realizing the flavor of self-love. And that's that uh, you never talk to yourself any differently than you would talk to a five-year-old in pain. Because these wounded aspects of our consciousness that are holding on to these patterns that we want to let go of, they are five-year-olds in pain. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a good um, rule of thumb. One that I have really been taking in for myself for the first time really in my life. That's, uh, and it's, it's doing it in public sometimes is tough because for me, because it, it doesn't, it doesn't translate well, if you know what I mean. I don't care that um, and see that even that sounds horrible. Uh, <laughs> I do care. That's not what I meant. Um, You're gonna not let your behavior be influenced by the reactions of others, right? Is, I think what you're trying to say. Yes, exactly correct. Exactly correct. Um, because yeah. especially in this case, it is. It's all for me. Mm -hmm. it, if if it's if it's not to benefit my growth, then why bother? I don't. I, you know what I mean? For mm -hmm. me, I don't understand why I would even bother. Yeah. Well, the. The first part about it, that, that square one on the spiritual journey is self-allowance. And, and that's really why I like the idea of not talking to yourself any differently than you would talk to a five-year-old or a toddler in pain. Because the first, for whatever reason, that toddler's in pain, well, it's understandable. This is a toddler. They're going to they're gonna run into situations that that are going to be painful to them. And, and it doesn't mean they're bad. It's not their fault. Uh, they're just no, making some observations. And it's unfair for anyone, myself included, to say to myself, well, this shouldn't cause you pain. Well, guess what? You don't get to decide that. Even I don't get to decide that. If I have pain, you know what I mean? It's like, if that's what it is, then that's what it is, right? 
that's my thought on it. Well, we can only describe what's going on on in our journey and right. so much of the insanity that goes on in the world is that there's a a prevalent response out there to come in and say no this is what your journey is we're defining it and we expect you to operate with the definitions that we've just given you <laughs> yeah exactly do you think that might be because all of a sudden I just had this flash of, well, because I've experienced a lot of adults in my life as I was younger and even as a young adult and even as an adult, people being uncomfortable when another person expresses emotions, let's say tears or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're uncomfortable and therefore they want you to stop because you're making them uncomfortable. Not because they don't want to see you in pain, but it's because you're making them uncomfortable. That's been my experience anyway. And so I wonder if when you said that just then about we're going to give you this, you know, set of definitions and this is how you have to go about your journey or whatever. I wonder if that's a, a reaction to being uncomfortable in the presence of someone who's actually doing that internal work. Because I've experienced that a time or two, someone coming in and saying, well, see, here's what your issue is. <laughs> well, I don't even know what my issue is. How do you know? I'm not quite sure the question you're asking, but, but I've got a response anyway. Okay. I love that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of defense mechanisms that, uh, that the ego has. And when the ego sees or hears the truth, uh, there's there's little that can be done to have your consciousness unsee it. It's like it's like your ego and your consciousness are two siblings that that are both now aware that uh, you know, mommy threw the cookies out. Like it, okay, situation's changed. You know, you're not going to get me to do anything for a cookie anymore because I know the cookies don't exist. Yeah, it, there, there's, a, there's a level of truth there. And that can come in. That, that nugget of truth can come into a person's being just by watching somebody else exhibit a particular behavior to the world at large. And I think just about instantly anybody sees behavior committed out, especially if it's a new form of behavior, one of the first things they do unconsciously is they imagine themselves in every aspect of that behavior. I'm the one doing this. I'm the one having it being done too. Boom, 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 boom. And to have that little snippet, like I'm imagining myself crying and looking inward oh whoa whoa there's too much there like like i got cracks in the dam if if i'm anywhere around this energy i'm gonna end up a a, a wet sobbing mess just like them and if you really if if there's not a possibility to separate yourself from that energy if it's someone in, in your regular field, then perhaps one thing that you're going to do is you're going to let them know about all the expectations that you have of their behavior so that they stop giving you the truth right in front of you because it's triggering to you. That means that you got a lot of work. It means that now the illusion of who you are to yourself is gone. And maybe it means that you have to acknowledge that you don't know who you are. Yeah. 
Hmm. Well, I know that's true for me. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but I'm okay well, I'm with that. the point where I, I realized I didn't know who I was. But now yeah. I know who I am in a lot of different areas. Yeah, I'm starting to get to know who I am in a lot of different areas, but I still don't know who I am in overall. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's that. But I'm okay with that because I the, the parts of me that I am fairly comfortable with thinking I know who they, who I am. <laughs> I'm okay with, <laughs> you know, I like, I like what you said about allowing though, because that's a big one. That that's a big one. I didn't allow and surrender actually have connotations for me personally that um, I had to do some work around. I've changed all my definitions for what those words mean. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because originally that that especially the surrender word was not an easy one for me. I get it now. I mean, I comprehend it differently, I think than I did before. Yeah, I think the word surrender really uh in, along my journey has tied in more with letting go of expectations. Uh, that that's really where, where I, I, I was, mm, had expectations of everyone, myself included. And, uh, and it was, it was interesting show when my expectations weren't met. That was for sure. Yeah. yeah. But, Self-allowance is so important. It's square one. Uh, and, and that's really what's going to turn our solitude into a great tool and benchmark going forward is that space that you carve for yourself and you feel, wow, this is, this is as low as it goes. I'm by myself. I can hang right here. Anytime another person comes into your field and you have an invitation to engage, you know, on a short term basis or a continuing basis, you can always check in now with this benchmark of, Hey, this is where I am when I'm by myself and I get near this person and yeah, I feel great. Well, that's a great person to keep in your field. But if every time you get together with this person, you're like, Oh, I'm down here. I can give this to myself by myself without your help. Why am I choosing <laughs> to interact with you on a continual basis and feel less than I know I can give myself? And the, the reason so many beings are out there and the reason that I used to engage on such a lower level is because I never knew what this level was. Hardly anybody ever has a chance to, to experience what solitude is. And it's a huge tool and, you know, makes me scratch my head of why it's not more talked about. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure as to why it's not talked about. I, and I, I, but I can tell you this, this, um, for, for me, so I'm 56 and I've never actually lived alone. This is the first time, and I actually don't live alone right now because Lisa and her husband live here right, right now with me. But I've never actually lived on my own, by myself, as a single person at all, ever. I was married the first time at 16. The second husband at 19 child at 21 and then of course you know not alone at all ever, <laughs> after that um so this this is really the the first time and i so for me personally there's that um but then there's also there's there's these uh you know that's that's a, a 
I've recognized it for myself as a bit of conditioning and programming that I perpetuated for myself, whether it be through, you know, just, you know, the circumstances of my life, A, and also, you know, there was the, there's always been the, the thought or the idea, well, you know, you, 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 you got to have a man in your life, you know, got to well, have. Well, that right there, that's, you got indoctrinated early that part of your self value is to have a man in your life. Exactly. And so much effort goes into all of us keeping this little facet of, of your reality in place because that's how we communicate to the world that, that we have value. Right. Exactly. Correct. You know, um, the whole idea of being single and alone a is she's alone. She doesn't have anybody, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, I mean, I've, I've seen it perpetuated out there. I mean, there's movies about that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, and so that's, that's one thing that I'm, I'm, I know that there's, you know, conditioning and programming in there about that. I mean, I'm not even thinking in terms of that for myself right now. I'm enjoying this journey of figuring out who I am. And I don't think I could do that. Uh, I know I know I couldn't because I, I couldn't do it with the husband I had. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's that. And so the solitude piece, I never had. I never had the opportunity. And then, of course, the, the programming and conditioning that went along with all of that I didn't know enough to allow myself the opportunity, you know, in, in between husband number two and husband number three, there was six years, but of course I had a child. So I, you know, it's, it's not the same. There is no solitude when you got a little one running around. Yeah. So this is all, new and exciting in a way it's it's hard work yes but it's also it's just different and i i'm enjoying the uh the twists and turns of figuring out about valuing myself just for the reason of of, of that i am who i am and liking who i am and being okay with who I am. Yeah, that you're right there at the crossroads of self-love. I mean, that's that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you get started on the spiritual journey. You put those puzzle pieces together and then the rest of them are kind of you, you know if you know you definitely know if they fit in. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's easy at all times though. God. No. Yeah. No, it's tough work. So much of our own personal identity uh, has been wrapped up in the perceptions that we've held and the definitions that we've carried throughout our whole lives. And every time we make an internal change on a particular facet of our being, something that, that was us, we have a grieving process to go to. No, exactly yeah. correct. And, you know, a good chunk of, of my past week is, is, has, been, has been grieving. I've changed some internal definitions of really, you know, what's abusive, what's loving, and, uh, and taking some, you know, direct observations uh, that are really doozies and, and integrated them. And it's a process of disillusionment, you know, the the relationship or the idea of the relationship that I had inside my head when I was five years old of what my mom and dad were is, is nowhere near what the, what the perception I have today. And, and it's all built up of direct observations and, you know, it's, 
to, to integrate that is, yeah, there's a lot of grieving that goes along with accepting the truth so that, wow, at least this internal separation that I had from trying to always see the world as a different way and ignore all of these observations to the contrary, at least that cycle, that stops. That's the gift that I can give myself. Right. Well, no one ever really talks about that grieving process, but that's an important part too, I feel like, because to not go through that, well, it has to happen in order to integrate properly. At least it does for me. Oh, it does for me. Yeah. Yep. Well, I got a lot more work to do on the whole self-valuing thing, but. We all do. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, it seems to be the, the common framework pattern underneath everybody's journeys right now um, is, is how are they valuing their self and how does that translate into how they're going to go forward? That, that's the question that the universe has asked them through a lot of intense experiences. And, you know, you can probably easily take apart the whole hat J thing and, and see that hat J is in the middle of an expression of, of self value, uh, you know, to, to the universe and, and a pretty, open and public forum, public way. And we're all waiting for the, the universe to recognize that. That'll give us a lot of hope that the universe is going to recognize uh, our spoken self value as well. Well, I have this feeling that especially after, you know, one of our most recent videos where we were talking about metaphors and how, source and consciousness is communicating to me specifically, I, I think to all of us, but to me specifically through metaphor. And we were talking specifically about pole reversals and what that really actually means, you know, because there's been a lot in the media or, you know, in different areas of the internet in regards to magnetic pole reversals of earth magnetic pole reversals of the sun, the magnetic pole reversals of the moon. All of that has been really out there for several years. When is it going to happen? They're watching for it to happen the next time, you know, talking about the pole shifts, the magnetic pole shifts on earth and, you know, all these different thoughts and processes. And, and the, the fact that that could very well be metaphor for the actual, poles of duality reversing you know that source i'm I, i'm seeing almost everything now as that you're so you're bringing up this idea of valuing of self well you're right the hat j thing absolutely to me in my thought process now having been involved in this for a little bit and not knowing as much about the oppt and all the background paperwork and everything that had to do with all of that. But seeing, feeling into all of that and seeing everything, some of that has to be, I think, metaphor for the valuing of self, source valuing self in a manner that I, I, there's something to that because that whole thing is about we are the value. The whole thing that that Heather talks about, everything that talks about the unfettered access and all that, because we are the value. Well, how, how do you value yourself then, right? I mean, I don't know. I just, there's something to that. I don't have the words. I'm not saying it properly, but there's something to that. Well, wrapped up in the, in that little dynamic is is some self allowance, and it's how much value are people going to allow themselves to experience? If you're talking about like unfettered access, uh, a lot of it. Wow, ask any artist, and and they've 
been right up in front of this question almost from square one and and that's hey i I've, I've spent this much time and poured this much of my soul into this particular piece and uh you know, now there's got to be this dirty economic transaction in here and and how much am i going to value myself and if what if somebody what if I'm going to put $200 price tag on this painting and some uppity dude from New York comes in here and offers me 20,000. Oh, Oh no, no, I can't take that much. What, where, where's our line? Like there's, there's a question in there that the universe is bringing you and, and really the universe doesn't care what the answer is so much the universe just wants you to look within and know yourself that's why I said I feel like um, for me having been now you know I haven't gone there and witnessed everything and all that there's more to this there's not it's a I have a sneaking suspicion it has more to do with consciousness than I even realize. It's playing out in a physical way if you you know if we in a physical 3D way. Well, here's, here's, here's an idea that just popped into my head out of the blue. I've never had this idea before, so, so that's why I'm going to run with it here. Just imagine if, like right now I'm a being, I've got two eyes, I'm, I'm one. But just imagine I could put something on and I just know that uh, there's no way that I could get both of my eyes to focus on the same thing. They're, they're both looking at something different and all of a sudden inside my head, now I've got a consciousness that's looking through my left eyeball and one through my right all eyeball. They both think that they're different, but yet really all we got to do is take away whatever that is that's causing the illusion of separation. And, uh, I just have a feeling that the flavor of what you were talking about is somehow similar to that. Yes, I think so. I, I know that anytime I ever try to bring this up, it's like, um, you know, because we all live in this scarcity and lack and, you know, these, these perceived ideas and, about we don't have enough or, you know, can't make the bills or, you know, the way life is right now on planet Earth, all that kind of thing. It's hard for us to maybe look at what's going on here in any other way than they are doing this to us or what, you know, whatever, okay? But when I see this stuff now, when I look at it, because I went back and I found a... some of the stuff from the from the from, from the IUV and starting to read some of it and it's very clear to me that this is not just 3D level stuff it's multidimensional and it always has been at least that's my take on it at this point now, that doesn't mean I'm right but for me I'm yes, we're seeing some of this play out in a 3D way. And yes, I'm very well aware that they are where they are and that they're going through this. And I'm not trying to make light of that in any way, shape or form. I would never do that. These are real folks and this is a real issue. And I get that. But I, I think there's multi-layered, multi-leveled, multi-dimensional stuff going on here that I know I can't bring into a linear 
description of. But I just feel that that's there, that that's... because we are the value we are the value how how do you how, how can you say that in any other kind of way i mean we just are and and i when i was trying to have this conversation with someone that's not you know one time they wanted to know what i was doing why are you why are you going to this trial what's up with that you know what is that you're doing over there kind of thing and I'm like well, well well think about this for a second you get up every day and go to work right that's your energy right you know I was just trying to get it very basic and I'm not very good at that bringing these things into a linear speech to try to explain what I think I understand you know and that's you know sometimes that's a <laughs> maybe I do and maybe I don't but I don't know. I just see a lot of what's going on with that whole thing as being bigger than it's not about the money. I don't think maybe on one level, I guess. And you know, a lot of people don't want to hear that because we're all, you know, support, <laughs> you know, just trying to scrape by kind of thing. Well, you know what, how how have we defined money like once you get once you get down the rabbit holes far enough and you start looking into the monetary system you, your idea your internal definition of what money is to you necessarily tell anybody what what's going to happen on their journey once i got in there i necessarily changed what my definition of money was and oh now our internet connection's unstable yeah, I know. I saw that. I need to. Huh. Oh, we're at major lag here. I know. Well, I guess maybe. There you're back. Am I? Yeah. Well, maybe we should wrap it here for now. Yeah, I probably should. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed talking with you, though. Yeah, we, we have some great talks. I, I really like this weekly thing. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, I will always put a I will always put a link to your channel in, in the body of this video along with my information. And I really I want you to stay right there though so we can see about our next one. Okay. All right. So thanks. All everybody. right, sounds good. <laughs>